This week we're featuring the infamous power couple, Pat Benatar and Neil Giraldo. But first, let's get to know one of the most recognizable female voices in the industry, Miss Sarah McLaughlin. We're going deep because we got Sarah McLaughlin in the house. We're here at the Fillmore in San Francisco. We're going to find out what makes Sarah tick. What makes Sarah make people cry? That's what we want to know. <laughs> First thing, wow. So people cry every time they see that damn commercial, and it worked, uh, though. It works like a hot well, damn. congratulations. Yeah, thank you. How much has it earned? Well, a number of years ago, they told me $30 million, Wow, come on now. crazy, but... You, you could buy a real nice airplane for $30 million bucks. You could buy a couple of things for, you could, yeah, <laughs> save so, a small country. It's such a funny thing, because, you know, this charity that you're doing for me is about cancer research for Jean mm -hmm. Nakamura, who's doing really good research about infants that are born with brain tumors and have to have radiation immediately, and she tries to nurse them back to health so that the radiation doesn't, you know, it's, it's not, not a long-term kind of deal. Yeah. And I know you do a lot of stuff, too, because when I asked you to do this, you know, you just like... Yeah. Well, do you know why, I, in particular, I wanted to do this? Because um, a dear friend of mine, Imani Brown, is a cancer survivor, a brain cancer survivor, and I was her Make-A-Wish person. Oh, man, she asked you've to done meet that. me when I, when she was 17 years old, and she had an inoperable brain tumor and was given about six months. When they still told people how much time they had, and 17 years later, I had dinner with her last night. Oh man! Here in San Francisco, so it's beautiful. Here they, here you know, they beautiful come again, success folks. Story. I'm so damn easy. The wind blows, and look, I get goosebumps. <laughs> That is beautiful, and that's how you get bit in, in charity work, right? I mean, it, it, yeah. when you see it, and you're a hands-on person like you are. Well, we have such a, we have an ability to give of ourselves. I mean, we do as musicians, and it's just an extension of that, you know, to, to be able to live our purpose and to, to give back. It feels great. So listen to you sing up there, for real now. I'm, I'm a jokester all the time, but I'm so envious of a person that so effortlessly can go up and hit them big old high note like you just belted <laughs> out with a, at a piano with a bunch of people standing around working and just go to this note and it sounded like an angel. Were you always able to do that? Did that take practice or I mean, um, are you just gifted with that? I was kind of gifted with it. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've, I've been singing as long as I can remember and it's always been like my best friend. You know, uh, it's always It sounds there. so comfortable. Uh, you're mm -hmm. not embarrassed to sing? No. Oh man. I was embarrassed to sing in front of my mother and father. That yeah. freaked me out, but singing in front of, you know, anybody else is fine. That's amazing. I'm so <clears throat> paranoid about singing. I'm cool. Really? I still walk up and yeah, I'm, I'm an idiot. But it's so funny because I'm listening to you, I'm going, damn. Like I can go up and scream and hit damn near any note, you know, on the planet, but I gotta just torture myself yeah. to do Take it. Your <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah, and I pay for it the next morning, you know, after I do a show, but you wake up in the morning, your voice were like... Yeah, you know, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I go to bed at night. Whoa, I thought you, you said know. you like to have a good time. I do. <laughs> <laughs> don't need to do those things to have a good time. This is more fun. I party for one going on all the time, so... Oh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I like to have a good time, but I don't, I don't go crazy because I'm too old now, but... Yeah, we went crazy in the 30s and yeah. maybe the 40s and... Yeah, and yeah. The, maybe the early maybe 50s. Maybe the 20s and... Yeah. And, and my I'm late 60s, yet, and then I... Then I, <laughs> then I <laughs> <laughs> I had to settle down. Uh, <laughs> Sarah. You look really good. Oh, I feel pretty damn good. I'm, I'm, I'm a happy guy, and you're a happy lady. I can tell. I see that little sparkle in your eyes. Thank you for coming here. My pleasure. Thank you for doing this concert. Thank you. I'm happy you to be here. You will be happier when you leave. Awesome. The first time I met this next artist, I was in Maui on vacation with my family, and later on, went over to Mr. Shep Gordon's house, and I walked in, in the middle of this person playing piano and singing, and I swear, I thought somebody was playing a record, okay? The most beautiful voice I've ever heard, especially when you're coming out in Maui and it's everything so good, so nice. Miss Sarah McLaughlin, come on! Uh, this one is, um, it's about forgiveness and redemption. Two very important things. So 
time to get Pat and Neil so I had to I had to do it the day before Mother's Day because I knew Pat wasn't gonna work on Mother's Day but anyway I'm so honored and for the finally they could make it old old friends of mine we've been friends since I don't know when Pat Benatar and Neil Geraldo We're going to do a song from a record we call Enamorata. Oh, no, Gravity's Rainbow, yeah? Yeah. yeah. So some of these, sometimes you have to make records that aren't crimes of passion. Some of these are really good, one, good ones, and this one, this song is from there. It's one of our favorite ones off of that record. That's a fun little it. song. Come on. You ready? Here we go. Shame. 
this one. 